Hello, we're going to very quickly construct the Fibonacci spiral and the Kepler and Golden Triangle using these three materials here, a pencil, a compass, and a straight edge. It doesn't have to be a, a right triangle like this. It can be any straight edge. You want to set your compass to a very narrow diameter because an eight and a half by an 11 piece of paper will, you'll quickly run out of space if you don't set your uh, compass to a very narrow diameter. Let me get my angles oriented correctly with the camera so things are straight for you. Close enough. Okay. So to start, all you need is the compass. And somewhere about in the middle of your page, you're going to draw a fairly uh, a circle with a, ver a fairly uh, small radius. Maybe half an inch. I'm actually going to start it a little bit lower down the paper because the, the, uh, the image will emerge kind of in this direction. Now what we're trying to accomplish right now is we're trying to inscribe a vesica Pisces, circle, two circles, vesica Pisces, one over the other inside of a rectangle. So that's what I'm going to do. And the way that I'm going to do it is by placing my, I've drawn a circle, now I'm going to I've placed a point. It doesn't matter where, really, you tr because the the image will emerge from the circles. We're not going to use any right angle instruments here. We're just going to use circles. So very quickly. All right. Now I've got these two circles here, and this inside this is a vesica Pisces. So we're going to draw a rectangle that goes around this. But in order to draw the rectangle perfectly, we have to continue drawing circles. Now, at this point, we need to establish what's called a construction line, a straight line that goes through this point here and this point here. And that will make a, a, a horizontal line that itself is perfectly perpendicular to the vertical line that I could draw through the Vesica Pisces. And then we'll continue drawing circles. But first, take your straight edge, line up the dots, take your time with this. These first few circles can make all the difference. And draw a, draw a line. Now, we need to create more circles. So put one here to the left of your, your two Vesica Pisces circles, and then come over here and draw another one. Okay, now let's not get lost yet. Remember what we want to do. We want to create a rectangle around these two circles here, this one and this one. It's easy to get the circles confused, but we want a rectangle that goes right around those two. So how would we accomplish that? Well, we need to draw a vertical line here and another one here, but we don't yet have the ability to draw a perfect vertical line. So draw another circle to the left and then over here draw one more circle on the right okay now let's count the circles one two three four five six six circles 
here were our original two circles. Now, if you see, um, I'm about to be able to draw vertical lines. And I, I'm still not there yet, because while I've got this point, I need at least one other reference point below or above this circle in order to make it perfectly straight. So how do I do that? Well, draw more circles. Put your point right there. and draw a circle. Now, place your point right there and draw another circle. There were other ways to accomplish this task, but we're going to use the the method of sacred geometry, which is circles only. And we're going to limit ourselves to just drawing circles. OK, is it clear now that, remember, here's our original two circles, and I want to draw a vertical line. Is it clear now that I've got this point here and this point here, and I can now draw a vertical line that passes passes through these two points. Now, geometrically, this will be perfectly, perfectly perpendicular to the construction line I drew horizontally. Okay. Now, if the camera is distorting it slightly, it's because the angle of the camera to the paper is a little bit off. But that is perfectly right angle right there I've made. So I need to make another one. Because here's my original two circles. Okay, so now I, I need to do a similar process over here. If you don't know where to put your compass next, just keep following your pattern, and I'll show you it'll emerge. Just keep drawing circles. Okay, the next one goes here. And then we need another one right here. OK. Remember, my original two circles were this one right here, and then this one right here. So now I have, if I want to make a vertical line here, I have what I need. I have these points. Each one of these points gives me something. Right? So let's find our original two circles and figure out where to draw our line, our vertical line. So here's circle one, and here's the Vesica Pisces that was created with that circle. I'll just highlight it briefly. This gives you some kind of focus point visually. You don't have to do this on your end. OK, I want. So now here's my second circle. So I'm looking for a point where I can draw a vertical line here. And I've got one. So I'm going to draw another vertical line.
Okay, so I've got two vertical lines drawn. And now I need to in, inscribe a rectangle around those two circles. And here's the key. You need to draw your horizontal lines at the bottoms of the circles. There's a temptation to cut off these tips. Don't do that. You want to you want to put it around the circles. Otherwise, the math won't work. So down here, I've got a point here. And I have a point here. So I'm going to draw another horizontal line. One right there. And I need to inscribe the circles here. So I'm going to The two circles that I want to inscribe are right here. And I find it easier to come at this from the top because I can see what I'm doing. Now just kind of darken in your rectangle. All right. Now, <clears throat> we need to create a line right through this point such that these two are perfectly square. I'll create a line that creates two small squares, one here and one here, and then a bigger square right here. So I'm going to draw a line within this rectangle that passes through these two points. All right. It helps now. You could use the eraser on your pencil, or if you have one of these erasers, they work a little bit better. We don't need it's visually distorting. Um, we don't need this stuff inside this square. And we don't need the stuff around it either. So you don't have to erase these things. But just to make things really clear, so you can see what we're trying to do here, I'll erase it. You get so many lines going with the compass that things get confusing. So I'm an idiot, um, so I try to make it simple. Now, you want to make this little square, these two squares here, pretty clear. Okay, so this is our first rectangle. Now, it takes, it's worth taking a moment just now to remember what we're trying to do. You know, because the question is, why did we just do that and what are we doing next? Well, remember, we're, we're constructing something called the Fibonacci spiral. And so the Fibonacci sequence is relevant. I think it's actually called a series. The Fibonacci series um, is, I can't ever remember if it's 0, 1, 1, or just 1, 1, but we'll, let's say it's 0, 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, 
21, and so on. And the way we come up with the Fibonacci series is uh, by adding the, the number that comes next to the previous number. Or I'll show you how that works. Let me zoom in a bit here. All right. Okay. So the Fibonacci series. One plus zero is one. One plus one is two. Two plus one is three. Three plus two is five. Five plus three is eight. 8 plus 5 is 13, 13 plus 8 is 21, and it would just continue on forever like that. So we're representing this series in, 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 in a visual sense. So this is a square of 1, and this is also, this square has the same size as the one above it, so that's also 1. This square is 2. Now, this angle here, or not angle, this rectangle here, this whole rectangle, that's 3. Now, the next number in the sequence is 5. So, how do we draw that? The way you do it is you take your compass and open it up until the compass dimensions are this distance, the distance of 3. Place your pointy end right here and the other end right there. And you're going to make an arc going up till it hits that line right there. And make this precise as you can. All right. Now, before we continue, I'll show you how far we've gotten in our spiral. The this is part of the spiral, and it's gonna it's gonna come in and then do a curly cue like that. So let's draw it so you see where we're going and where we've gone so where we've gotten already. The, see what I've done here? I'm on number two, and so I've made my compass the distance there. And I've got my pointy end right here, and I'm going to draw, be careful with your compass or it won't look right. I'm going to draw a, a line that continues this arc inside this square. Okay, now I'm going to do the same thing inside this number one here. So I need to shrink my compass to be that length. Put my pointy end right there and Continue the spiral inside this square. Now, because these are the same size, I can just continue this way, like that. So 
So there's our spiral so far. <clears throat> Let me get back to this one. Make it darker. All right. So you see where we're headed now? If this was one and this was one and this is two, this is three, this rectangle is three, I need to make a new rectangle here. And this rectangle will be five. So I need to find this point. How do I do that? Well, I need to make a little mark. Put my pointy end over here. But don't draw the whole arc. Just make a little make a little mark right there. Okay? And now take your straight edge and connect these two. Um, come at it from the top. Now you can shade, darken in these, this longer vertical line here. Now we need to continue making the spiral. So what do we do? Well. Now, we need to set our compass all the way from here to here, this whole distance. That's why it pays to draw small circles. Okay. So set your compass point at the bottom right of your number five rectangle one one two three five set your pointy end right down there and then make sure the diameter is just right and you're gonna arc down like this Eraser, get rid of this. This was that horizontal construction line. This is one place where you could confuse yourself. Now, we need to draw a horizontal, we need to extend our horizontal line through that point over there. And I need to extend my top horizontal line.
I'm just going to draw a soft one now because as I'm about to show you we don't quite know how to draw that vertical line over on the far right just yet. We don't quite know where this point is in space. We need to find it and it's best to find it using the compass. So just like we did for this one we made that little dash. Place your pointy end right there come up here and draw a little mark. See that mark right there? Now, take your straight edge and you want a vertical line that passes through those two points. We're going to make a rectangle here. And I'm now going to darken in this rest of this rectangle. Do you see the spiral? You've made the Fibonacci spiral. This is your number one, one, two, three, five. This is number eight. This rectangle here is number eight. Five plus three is eight. And now we're ready to construct our Kepler and our golden triangles. It would be better, I should hasten to add, if we continued making these rectangles. We made one more bigger, but I don't have enough space on this page. <clears throat> the reason is because what we're trying to get to, let me tell you where our roadmap is heading, is leading us. We're trying to get to this number phi. Okay, and that's a that's a physical number. It is equal to one point six one eight, and then it continues. It doesn't repeat, it continues. But that gives us a close enough approximation. So what am I what am I talking about? How does this phi symbol and that number relate to what I've just drawn? Here's how it relates. Find the ratio of 1 divided by 1. What is that? What is 1 divided by 1? 1 divided by 1 is 1. Well, that's, that is not 1.618. Let me draw that down here so you can keep it in, in your mind where, what we're looking for. We're looking for phi, which is equal to 1.618. And it continues. So these rectangles are ratios of one another and I want to get a rectangle where I can draw where this line is equal to phi but I need to keep I need to figure that out well the only way I can figure it out is by checking the ratios of the succeeding Fibonacci numbers so the ratio of 2 to 1 2 divided by 1 is 2 that's not 1.618 how about 3 divided by 2? Well, we're getting a little bit closer. That's 1.5. How about 5 divided by 3? What is that? 5 divided by 3 
is 1.66 repeating. 1.6 repeating. And then 8 divided by 5. one point six so this was one point six six remember we're looking for one point six one eight now I've got one where it's one point six that's really close to one point six one eight this ratio is very similar to Phi it's very close so now let's see what thirteen divided by eight would give us and we didn't get to draw the thirteen circle or pardon me, the 13 number rectangle. But if we had, let's see where it would have gotten us. 13 divided by 8 is 1.625. It looks like we lost some ground because we were closer to our goal right there. Well, okay, stick with me. What's 21 divided by 13? Ah, really getting close now, 1.6154. So 21 to 13 is 1.61538, or we'll just put 1.615. That's really getting close to phi. What's happening is you have a kind of what's called a convergent series. This is a convergent series. And basically what it means is the numbers are doing this. They're oscillating around and they're honing in on a point. And that point that they're honing in on is phi. That's what's happening. So but with the 8 to 5 tr uh, ratio here, we've got a 1.6 ratio. That's pretty darn close to phi. And it will allow us, using our crude drawing instruments, to draw what we need. Now, how do we draw what we need? Well, we need to um, locate the center of this square. That's important. I need to locate right there in the center of this square. Now think back to your very first few geometry lessons. This is a square. And if that's a square, I can draw from one diagonal to the other a very soft line. And I've cut the square into two pieces. They're equal. I can do the same thing here. All right, that's my center. Now, if I take my compass and I create, I can make a circle inside here. What we want is we're going to find the mid midpoint here. you can see the sacred geometry would have given it to us because those line up but let's let's draw it let's draw it this way put your pointing in right in the middle of the circle and your drawing end line it up <clears throat> with the just inside the edge of the square just inside, I mean right on the edge where it's going to touch, but just touch, just barely touch. So you see how I've got a, a square in there now? The tangent points, uh, pardon me, a circle, the tangent points are about right there, there, 
there and there. There's four tangent points of this circle where the square tangents the circle there, 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 and there. I need a midpoint line right there. But I, how do I draw it? I still don't have enough information to draw this line. Not accurately. So I can use a similar technique. My radius is still there. Come over here and put your pointy in there. <clears throat> Make a little inscription mark right there. Now do the same thing on the bottom. Okay. That dot will allow you to draw a perfect midpoint. It's just a guide mark. What you want to do is draw a midpoint. Soft lines, guys. Soft lines. All right? It's visually obvious now. I've got this is of equal. These two rectangles are of equal dimensions. This point right here is the midpoint of the circle. Okay. Now, in order to make the Kepler triangle, turn your paper 90 degrees. Now you've got the rectangle oriented this way. You're going to be drawing a diagonal from this point here to this point right here. All right, fair enough. <clears throat> now, we're going to see, we're going to try to prove something here. Oh, I will need, in order to prove what I'm trying to prove, I need to make one more, uh, I need to make one more midpoint line. So, before we continue, you drew that diagonal. Great. Place your, make sure your radius is still correct with your compass. Place your compass there on that point. Make a little guide mark there. Come over, do the same thing. Don't get lost. That's your, that's your Fibonacci spiral. This is the edge of your circle. Okay. Draw another soft midpoint line. Okay, now I've created four, uh, four squares inside this square. Okay, and you'll see why we needed to do that in just a moment. So let's return now. Now, take your compass. This is what you're going to do. Take your compass and open it up until the distance is from there to there. That's what you want. Check it. Make sure it's exactly right. It's important that it's exactly right. Now what you want to see What you want to see is if you've got five proportions, if you have five proportions, um, this will be equal to this distance here. That's the midpoint. This was the midpoint. If you have created what's called a golden rectangle, this distance will be equal to that distance. And you can see that it is. So what you do is you've got this distance here and you've checked and it's equal to that distance right there. So we have five proportions. This is called a golden section.
All right. The diagonal line is equal to the distance of this little square and the distance of that square. Do you see that there? Okay, so now we've got, we know we've got some proportions that are interesting. Now we need to create an arc to make our Kepler triangle. Don't, now you need to increase the diameter of your compass now to go from here to here. This is why it pays to draw small circles when you first start so that you can make this big arc at the end. So place your pointy end down in the bottom right. Top end over there. Arc down like that. It's hard to see. But where my where this point is right here, that is where that arc hits the edge of the rectangle. And that's where you want you need that point. That's the that's why we just did that. We needed that point. So go make that clear. All right. Now we're just, we're about to draw the Kepler triangle, and the way we do that is we go from this this point right down here to that point. We create a diagonal line. This is your Kepler triangle. This triangle right here. And it has very special properties. And we'll we'll talk about those properties here. Those very special properties are that if this distance is one, if this distance is one, remember base height hypotenuse. If this distance, if the base is one, the height of the Kepler triangle is equal to the square root of phi and the hypotenuse of the Kepler triangle is equal to phi. That's interesting that those relationships should exist. If you want to see this proven, you can do the Pythagorean theorem. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. 1 squared plus square root of phi squared equals phi squared well let's 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 do the problem and see what we've got one squared is one square root of phi squared is phi so one plus phi equals phi squared now here's an interesting property of phi this number, 1.618, so on and so forth, is the only number 
whose square is equal to itself plus 1. So this is, in fact, an identity. 5 plus 1 is equal to phi square. We don't need to do square root here and find phi by itself like you would normally do with the Pythagorean theorem. Th this is it. 1 plus phi is phi squared. And if you don't believe me, let's, let's take the calculator out and prove it. Let's say that phi, all we've got is an approximation. Remember, this number goes on and on. 1.618. Let's just add 1 to it. That gives us 2.618. Okay, 5 plus 1. Now let's see if we take, remember, 2.618. So let's take phi again, or our approximation, 1.618, and let's multiply that by itself, or square it, 1.618. Now remember, when we added 1 to 1.618, we got 2.618. When we squared 1.618, here's what we get, 2.6179, or round up, 2.618. So I've just proven that I've done it two ways now. I remembered the phi identity, phi plus 1 equals phi squared. And I've remembered the, I've just done it, phi squared is equal to phi plus 1 arithmetically. If you want to go from this formula back down to the other formula, you can just take the square root of both sides, and you'll get square root of 1, which is just 1, plus square root of phi equals phi. And so that's 1 plus square root of phi equals phi. We're back to our Kepler triangle ratio, or dimensions. <clears throat> 1 square root of phi, phi. All right, now let's continue and draw the golden triangle. So my diameter my hypotenuse right there. Maybe you've already noticed this, but the way I drew it was I created a circle that went through that point. So look at my distance. If this hypotenuse is equal to phi, okay, the distance from here to here is also phi because this could be the radius of a circle with the mid with the middle right there. And this my pencil lead is drawing the edge of the circle. I could continue. Okay, I could continue drawing a circle if I wanted to. It's not necessary. But if I think about it like that, this is a big circle. So this is phi, 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 and then boom, phi. So that distance is phi now. Where the eight is. The proportions here, 1, phi squared, this distance is phi, this distance is phi. So we'll call this distance here phi. And if you're thinking, well, wait a minute, is it 8 or is it phi? Just remember, these are two separate things that we're doing here. First, I was showing you the Fibonacci spiral. Now I'm showing you the phi relationships. So the it's hard to see, but this is blue ink. These 8s and 5s and 3s and 2s and 1s are the Fibonacci numbers. These are the phi ratios here in blue. Now I'll draw the golden triangle. It's very simple. Take a point from here and draw it all the way down to here.
just make a soft mark. Now, the nature of rectangles is that if I've created, let's use this rectangle as an example. <clears throat> if I've created a rectangle here with this hypotenuse, it's perfectly legitimate for me to flip it like this. Okay. And I've also got rectangles of the same dimensions here that I can flip like this, right? So just now draw another point from here down here. This one you can make more vigorously. And I'm going to make this line more bold. OK, so this triangle that I've made in here, this whole thing, is the golden triangle. And this is also a golden triangle right here. This is also a golden triangle. Now, but I drew it this way so I could show you something, something remarkable. Do you see how these, these two triangles, this Kepler triangle and this golden triangle, they're not the same size. But what I'm going to claim is that the hypotenuse of this golden triangle here I should I should add that the hypotenuse is there so the base of my golden triangle is here and the height is here and I'll color this stuff in in a minute but just stick with me on this this distance remember is phi phi so I'm going to claim that this hypotenuse for the golden triangle is phi squared. Now, I can prove this with the Pythagorean theorem. I knew this was phi, so that means this distance is also phi. And this was distance we're calling 1. So those ratios we've already shown down here how I can get to phi squared. Okay, 1 plus phi equals phi squared. Let's check out something pretty neat. Okay. <clears throat> Let's use the Pythagorean theorem to show that this is in fact true. So if this is in fact true, then the dimensions of my golden triangle are 1, phi, phi squared. Does that work? Well, let's see. Base, 1, 1 squared, plus phi squared, equals phi squared, 
squared. Okay, does that compute? Well, let's see. 1 squared is 1, plus 5 squared, equals phi to the fourth. Okay. Now, take, let's take um, our calculator and see if this works. And we could, we could take the square roots of both sides, but let's see if this works. Phi, we're going to use our 1.618 times 1.618 equals 2.617924. So that's phi squared. We're going to add 1 to it, plus 1. I got 3.6179. Let me make that note there. This is 3.6179. What I want to know is if that equals phi to the fourth. So old school technology. Let's test. 1.618. I don't have a scientific calculator, so we're just going to multiply it by itself four times. Times 1.618 times 1.618 times 1.618. Equals six point eight five three five. Eight five three five. Okay. Now stick with me. Does the square root of this number equal this number? No, it doesn't. But 1 squared is 1, right? Plus phi, squ phi squared equals phi to the fourth. And I don't know why it's not computing. I think I'm confusing myself somehow. I think I'm confusing myself somehow. Let me let me take the Pythagorean let me use the Pythagorean theorem and take the square root of this and the square root of this and see if I can get back to the identity we created over here. There may be a I may have made a verbal mistake somewhere here. Please forgive me. Uh, Take the square root of both sides. So we have the square root of 1 squared plus the square root of phi squared equals phi squared. That's Oh, it wasn't showing up. Here. So this 1 squared is 1. So the square root of 1 is 1.
the square root of phi squared is phi. And we already took the square root of phi to the fourth, and that equaled phi squared. Where have we seen this before? Over here, we say that 1 plus the square root of phi equals phi. OK? And here we're saying that 1 plus phi equals phi squared. Now, is there another strange identity at work here? There, there is, there is. This is true. Phi squared is equal to phi plus one. Now, we proved that earlier, remember? Because 1.618 times 1.618 equals 2.6179. And then if we took 1.618 and just added 1 to it, we got 2.618. So this is, this is true. What I did here, there's, there's, something, going, there's something wrong. And I, I'm in the middle of making this video, so let's just skip that for now. But the, using the Pythagorean theorem, we got to it. I wanted to show it with the numbers, but... I have to look at it in more detail. All right, so now we're done. Almost. I want to show you a relationship called the golden section, and then that will be the end. We'll get to the end of the video. Let's use some colored pens here to show you something. This section here is the golden section. So these two segments together make the golden section. Okay? That's the golden section. <clears throat> These dimensions show up all throughout nature uh, and in architecture. So this is the golden, that's the golden section. If you Google Parthenon golden section, you can see the Parthenon with uh, the golden section in its architecture. If you Google uh, galaxy Fibonacci spiral, you can see the Fibonacci spiral in galaxies. And it goes on and on. I'm just drawing my triangles here. I find this, these correspondences, especially the math part. So the geometry is fun. It's fun to draw this stuff. But the correspondences, the strange coincidences between phi and the golden triangles and the golden ratios and the Fibonacci sequence, all that stuff is very, very mysterious to me. And as you can see, I'm not a, a mathematician. Um, I'm just fascinated by the correspondences, and I'm learning every day right along with you about these strange coincidences in mathematics. Um, but our Kepler triangle, um, Kepler has a quote about <clears throat> this, these coincidences, and he says there's something remarkable. It's in the Wikipedia article under Kepler triangle. 
I don't get into the, you know, there, there's a lot of uh, great pyramid architecture videos that suggest that phi is the basis for the great pyramids architecture. And it, it, it probably is. It, it very well may be. But what people do, and this is where they lose me, is they say, you know, this is just too, too ins insanely coincidental. It's got to be the Anunnaki visitors or aliens. And I say, well, is that really, do you need to, to invent a, an alien uh, race? Or can we just be astonished by the, the coincidence of the mathematics? You know, there's, there's visual harmony here. Um, and this phi symbol and the golden ratio and the Fibonacci spiral show up in music as well. All this stuff was uh, invented by Pythagoras in, you know, the 5th century or 6th century BC. And um, I don't think we need to invoke a an alien, an intelligence uh, other than human. I don't think we need an extraterrestrial intelligence to explain how the Great Pyramid proportions are so perfect. If you watch Graham Hancock... Uh, talk about the Great Pyramid. He gives a fairly lucid explanation of all of its correspondences. Um, they say it's much older than we think or than we've been told. And it, it may be much older than we've been told. But uh, again, I don't... And the, it's, it seems impossible that um, the pyramid builders could have built the Great Pyramid given their limited tools. Um, I can't explain that, but again, I, I, I don't, I don't think that just because I don't have a, a good scientific explanation for something, that that automatically means the aliens did it, or there's Anunnaki that did it. Um, let me just darken this in a little bit more. It's, it's also very beautiful art. Uh, it's, it's precision that produces something beautiful, and mathematics produces something beautiful. I think that teachers, you know, I never saw this when I was in school, and why didn't I see it, you know? It would have been interesting. I, I hated math when I was in school. I absolutely hated it. I hated trigonometry, and this whole thing is full of, we can derive the trigonometric unit circle from just a bunch of circles. Um, but nobody taught me this. Nobody showed me the spiral. For heaven's sakes, that's too interesting for a public school system, I guess, to let children see the interesting relationships. But that's my beef, you know. I never liked math. Um, but I think if people, if someone had shown me this interesting stuff when I was in school, I might have liked it more. So there they are. I mean, um, this golden rectangle is kind of hiding behind, or pardon me, the golden triangle is hiding behind Kepler's triangle. I could have drawn the golden triangle over here, but I wanted to show you how they related to one another. Kepler's triangle is smaller than the golden triangle. Um, remember, this is the golden section. And if you Google golden section architecture, you'll see some interesting stuff. Remember, the Kepler hypotenuse is phi. The golden hypotenuse is phi squared. The height of the Kepler triangle is square root of phi. The height of the 
golden triangle is phi. And so this was the interesting thing I wanted to point out to you. Um, it's just remarkable to me that such a relationship should, should exist. So before we close the video, let me take a moment with the Sharpie and um, make my Fibonacci spiral stand out. And guys, I, I, I should say, if you're watching this video, go spend $12 on a precision compass. It's worth the investment. And get yourself a bunch of paper and some colored pencils and some colored pens and markers and practice this. Watch this video over and over again until you're able to draw this and compute everything. Um, you know, I wish I... I hadn't made this computational mistake over here. I, I don't really know what I did, I, but um, it's part of the process. You know, I'm still learning. Four, uh, three, four days ago, I couldn't draw this. So um, I'll just finish by making the triangle with a pen so that its lines are nice and clear for you. And I hope that if you've been watching YouTube videos about Phi or about gold, Fibonacci and golden triangles and you've always wanted to know, how do I draw it? Um, there's only one other video that I've seen that shows the process clearly, but it's not narrated. Uh, well, I guess it is narrated. SGD. And that's where I learned the first sequence there. He does it a slightly different way, um, but it's the same thing. Now, what, where I, or I think this video has some merit on its own as a tutorial, is that he doesn't incorporate, he doesn't draw the Kepler and golden triangles. But that's not to take anything away from SGD's videos. I, it's, I couldn't have done this without SGD's videos, but this does add just one more thing that builds, I suppose, builds on his video a little bit in that we're computing uh, phi and testing it to make sure that it works and then we're finding these cool rectangles here uh, and triangles. It's just the, it's the, oh, I don't have not seen a video that shows the, all of the relationships between Fibonacci and phi, and the golden section, and the golden rectangle, and Kepler's rectangle, uh, pardon me, the golden triangle and Kepler's triangle. Um, I just haven't seen a video that interrelates everything in one video. So there it is. There's everything. I don't know which angle I like more, if I like it like that or if I like looking at it like this. This kind of makes the Fibonacci spiral look like a comma. And I like the, the Kepler triangle is here. I guess I should label it. That would be nice. Um, this is Kepler's triangle. That's not going to draw because I've shaded it with a colored pencil. I guess I won't label it. That'll take away from the visual harmony. Kepler's triangle. And then the one hiding behind it is the golden triangle. And here's the computations. The Fibonacci numbers are shown here in the golden spiral or the Fibonacci spiral. The golden section is shown. 
and remember this di this distance here angles up to be right there. That's interesting. Uh, and phi is 1.618. Remember that 1 plus the square root of phi equals phi, and that 1, the other relationship was 1 plus phi equals phi squared. <clears throat> if there's any errors that have come up while I'm doing this, I will mention them in the description. But I hope this was useful to you, and thank you very much for watching.